Hi friends, my name is Emily. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing my January 2019 wrap up. So January was a really great reading month for me. If you hear any noises, I'm not sure what's going to pick up on mic, but if you hear any noises, our laundry room is being redone. I will obviously stop if there's like cutting into the drywall again. This is the only time I have to film. So the first book that I read in January was a piece of middle grade fiction that is super spooky, super fun, and that is Small Spaces by Catherine Arden. Catherine Arden wrote The Bear and the Nightingale, The Girl in the Tower, and the recently released The Winter of the Witch. Um, this is an adult fantasy trilogy. I loved the first two books in the series, so when I learned that she had a piece of middle grade fiction, I was excited to see what that would be like. So this is a story of 11 year old Ollie who stumbles upon a woman crying by a river and trying to throw a book into the river, and Ollie rescues this book and then starts reading this story about these ghosts and this creature and sort of making a bargain with the devil. The next day her class takes a trip out to this farm and she realizes that the history of this farm is what she's been reading in this book. When the bus breaks down, she gets this warning to run. It was actually really well done. I thought it was really spooky. I thought the like scarecrows are kind of weird. Like you can kind of see them on the front here. Scarecrows are kind of weird and the scarecrows all over the farm that seem to be watching, seem to be moving, but you know logically shouldn't move because they're scarecrows. I thought that was really fun. I thought that Ollie sort of making friends after being really isolated, her mother has passed away and she's like the kid whose mother is dead. I thought that was fun to see, to see her sort of work through her grief and to open up and let people in again and make some friends. Um, and I thought it was just a really fun middle grade horror. The next book I have here is the Indigo Teen Staff Pick of the Month for January 2019, and that is The Field Guide to the North American Teenager by Ben Felipe. Although I am part of the committee that reads and votes on what is chosen as the staff pick of the month. I'm like in no way sponsored and I did pay for this book with my own money. So this is the story of Norris Kaplan, a black French Canadian teen who follows his mother to Austin, Texas, where she has been offered a position at a university where she can focus on her research interests and her teaching interests. So there aren't very many schools that cater to his mother's research interests, and the one school that happens to do so is in Austin, Texas. It's sort of him exploring these cultural differences, him making friends, him starting a hockey team in Texas. The fact that Norris is a black French Canadian teen who moves to the States, that's a better selling tagline than the actual contents of the story, which are just sort of meh. Um, I didn't find Norris all that funny. This is blurbed on the front as, quote, by far the funniest, wittiest, smartest character I have ever read, end quote. I don't know if it was having that on the front of the book and having that in my mind, like, oh, Norris is supposed to be funny. Is this funny? Like, I feel like it's almost like trying to tickle yourself in a way. So like, I didn't find Norris funny and I feel like having the expectation that he should be funny made me more critical, I guess, of any of the jokes or wittiness and I didn't end up finding this book all that funny. This wasn't my cup of tea, but if it sounds interesting to you, I wouldn't discourage you from picking it up. So the next book I have here, I don't own a physical copy of because I listened to it on audiobook and that is Becoming by Michelle Obama, which was absolutely phenomenal. And I'm actually glad that I listened to it on audiobook because Michelle Obama narrates her own story. And I think that was really powerful to hear her story in her own voice. And there were just so many things that like I didn't know about Michelle Obama. But again, I was sort of a teenager in high school when Barack Obama was elected in 2008. I didn't particularly care about American politics. I don't particularly care about American politics now, as evidenced by like every time we go to trivia and a lot of the current events questions are American politics, like whew, I'm really not paying attention to American politics because mm, as a Canadian citizen, I have no sway over 
their politics. I would much rather focus on Canadian politics because I can vote here and shape what happens here. So I really didn't follow all of the really cool things that Michelle Obama was doing, all of the projects and initiatives that she put in place, starting a community garden on the White House grounds, getting children from local schools involved in planting and harvesting and cooking healthy meals in the White House, taking the harvest from that garden and not only feeding her family in the White House, but donating hundreds of pounds of food to local shelters um, and food banks, like that kind of stuff. Like there were just so many things that I didn't realize Michelle Obama was doing that I think are actually really cool. So I was super glad that I listened to the audiobook and it is phenomenal. I really liked it and I can highly recommend the audiobook because it is narrated by her and I think that just adds another layer of engagement to hear her story in her own words. The next book I have here is The Art of Asking by Amanda Palmer. So this is a book that I picked up after Fran from Fran Nerd recommended it. Uh, so Fran is an artist here on YouTube and I feel like in general I have a lot of trouble asking for help even when I really need help. I thought that this would be a really good read. I was not attached to Amanda Palmer in any way as a human. This book is sort of a blend of biography and self-help and I understand why that format is important for this narrative, for this uh, book to work, but um, there were certain parts where Amanda Palmer is just talking about like her life and her experience as an artist that I found hard to get into. By the end I was much more interested in Amanda Palmer as a human, but like right from the beginning with so many biographical details it was a little hard to get into. By the end I did find it really interesting and engaging to see her perspective as an artist sort of growing and learning with social media as that that grew as a thing and crowdfunding as that grew as a thing. I did find this really interesting and there are definitely a couple of places where like I've extra highlighted, I've made a lot of notes in this book. Would recommend this, I did enjoy it by the end of it and I think I will refer back to this quite a bit. The next book I have here is another piece of non-fiction and that is Names for the Sea, Strangers in Iceland by Sarah Moss. So this is a piece of travel fiction I suppose in which Sarah Moss moves her family to Iceland for a year on contract at the University of Iceland and it is her experience of existing in this place that has hit an economic crash. Everybody's quality of life has sort of been dramatically affected. There aren't a lot of fresh fruits and vegetables, for example, because the climate in Iceland doesn't allow for a lot of growing of fresh produce, so it's all imported in. So just the jarring experience of food for Moss and her family coming from the UK, her explorations of Icelandic folklore and storytelling elements and the sort of more uh, spiritual aspects that some people have, like the idea of elves, the, I guess, commodification of the folk and fairy stories in some way. So some people seem to really believe it and they connect with nature and they collect, they connect with these forest spirits and it's like a personal thing for them and then other people are like, oh, Iceland's known for their elves, let's build an elf village and make it a tourist destination. And so they're selling this folk and fairy story. So I thought that was interesting. I thought just her connections to the landscape, her looks at Icelandic society. I think it was really interesting to look at that culture. I wonder though, because this book is now 11 years old, how true some of these things still are. So one of the things that Moss reflected on was that in Iceland flights, you were allowed to bring guns and ammo on the plane with you, provided the bullets were not in the gun and provided you only had like a certain amount of ammo. At the time that this was written, that was post 9-11. So I'm curious, like 11 years later, is that still allowed? The next book I have here is Conversations on Writing, Ursula K. Le Guin and David Nyman. So this is literally the transcripts of interviews between David Nyman and Ursula K. Le Guin. So there is a section on fiction, a section on poetry, and a 
section on nonfiction because Le Guin wrote in those three areas. Some of them I found more interesting than others. I found her fiction a lot more interesting than her poetry or nonfiction. What I took out of this book was the fact that uh, Le Guin has written another book on writing, something about steering steering the craft or something like that. It's something punny. That one might actually be more useful. Just from the contents of these interviews, it sounds like she reflects on writing and then gives writing exercises, so I'm curious to take a look at that in the future as I prepare for a second round of NaNoWriMo. The next book I have here is my unfortunate splurge for the month. I have set a goal to not buy any books. I did give myself a little bit of wiggle room in my rules for not buying books. One of them was if the book furthers my creative interests in any way, like a book on art or a book on writing is something that I'm allowed to buy provided I read it right away. I am interested in children's books and the art of writing children's books and one of my favorite children's book authors is Oliver Jeffers. And so he writes and illustrates his works for the most part. He does illustrate other people's works as well, but the books that I really enjoy are the ones where he writes and illustrates both. The Working Mind and Drawing Hand of Oliver Jeffers. So this is an art book and it looks at his career and the things that he's done. And one of the things that I really like and like I learned the most from was how the children's book, This Moose Belongs to Me, came to be. I thought the art style for this was really interesting. Now, what I didn't realize about this is, um, so this is a collaborative work between a dead author and Jeffers. So this landscape painting is something that Jeffers found and with the permission of the deceased author's family, used a collection of his landscape paintings to then draw his cute little character and moose and tell the story on. This piece came out of the ideas about ownership. There was a different understanding for what ownership was, and so in the white colonist settlers' understanding of ownership, it meant that this is mine forever, whereas that wasn't the case with the tribe who sold the land. It's about this boy and this moose, and this boy's like, you belong to me, moose, you are my pet, you will do all these things, and the moose is like, nope, I'm a moose. It's a silly children's book, but like it has, deeper meaning and that's something that I love about Jeffers' works and I just loved diving into this book, looking at all of his works, seeing sort of more of the process for a lot of his paintings. As somebody who is interested in children's literature, I think seeing his process for this was absolutely fascinating. Gave this five out of five stars and if you are interested in children's literature, if you are interested in art, I think this is fantastic and definitely worth flipping through if not putting in your budget to buy. The next book I have here, I picked up on Hannah McGregor's recommendations. So Hannah McGregor runs a podcast, Secret Feminist Agenda, and I can't remember which episode it was now. She recommended a bunch of fiction, and this was one of the books, Son of a Trickster by Eden Robinson. Now I'd had my eye on this for a while because I have read Monkey Beach by Eden Robinson and loved it. The first half of this book is Bleak. So this is the story of Jared Martin. So he is a 16 year old indigenous high school burnout. His mom is a drug addict and a drug dealer and incredibly volatile and violent and impulsive and is often violent towards Jared when he uh, displeases her. Witnessing Jared spend the first half of this book stoned or drunk and making really poor decisions and getting beat up and getting abused it was incredibly bleak. The last half of the book, and I'm gonna say this because I feel like if you don't know this, you'll probably put it down. The last half of the book becomes this magical, rich fantasy. It is mind-boggling in how stark a contrast there is between the front and back half of this book. There's like uh, intergenerational trauma narrative at the beginning and then halfway through she was like, you know what, this needs some indigenous folklore, indigenous spirituality, and magic. And like the last half of the book is just like, bam, magic. Because I was going into this having heard that this was like indigenous fantasy literature, I was expecting a lot more fantasy 
right off the bat. And so like it was incredibly hard to get into. But once I got to the end, I flew through the end, absolutely loved it and moved almost immediately into the sequel, which is Trickster Drift. This involves a cleaner, more sober Jared moving away from his mother, finding a family and a community and going to school, going to university. And it's really interesting to see new voices like this emerging in fantasy literature and making changes to what we consider fantasy literature. If you like indigenous literature, if you like thinking about trauma, I know who likes thinking about trauma, trauma scholars. If you like fantasy literature, I think there is something here for you. The next book I read here is the follow-up to The Witch Boy, which is a graphic novel for 9 to 12 year olds, and that is The Hidden Witch. This is the story of Aster, who is a boy who is finally allowed to learn magic. What I really like about these is that magic is a very thinly veiled metaphor for sexuality. Like, it's clearly for children, but it is doing a lot in terms of what it is aware of and what it is bringing into a story that like on the surface appears to be about like a really diverse family of witches. I think it speaks to a lot for young people to see themselves represented if they are queer or questioning, maybe see tangentially through a character defying their their box of like, I am a boy, so I have to shape shift, um, rather being like, I am a boy, but I want to do magic, or maybe I'm not a boy, maybe that's why I want to do magic. I really, really enjoy what uh, Molly Knox Ostertag is doing with this series, and I'm very excited to see her continue with this. So the last book I read in January very quickly because got activity going is in an Absent Dream by Seanan McGuire. So this is the latest book in the Wayward Children series, which consists of Every Heart a Doorway, Down Among the Sticks and Bones, and Beneath the Sugar Sky. These are very loosely connected. This is the story of Lundy. It's set in the 60s. We get to witness her travel into a world multiple times and grow up. It is about her choices. So she has the choice to stay in this world that really suits her or to be with her family and to be with her siblings and parents. The world that she's in is all about fair value. So making fair trades, fair bargains. I think this is by far my favorite in the series. Like I said, again, loosely connected. It's connected mostly by the idea of wayward children, children who stumble through doors. It's playing with the portal fantasy. It's being critical and thinking through portal fantasy as a fantasy subgenre. And I do think that you could read this one in isolation. Let me know your thoughts on any of these books in the comments down below. If you liked what you saw here today, give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing. That would be cool. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you soon. Bye.